Welcome to Fireside Nets with Spen and Nick, brought to you by Empire Sports Media. I am your host, Spen Harris, and I am joined by my brother, Nick Harris. What's good, Nicky H? Now my middle name. Uh, if our parents gave us the same middle name, I think we'd be Mormons. If we both were named Harris, we might be related to our buddy Joe Harris on the Brooklyn Nets. Or former Nets great. Devin Harris. Lush- I was going to say Lucius Harris, but Davin Harris works too. Devin Probably Harris better works. than Lucius. Hey. Lucius spent more time on the bike than he did on the court. <laughs> Shout out to a Nets great Lucius Harris, part of those early Jason Kidd teams. Uh, Nick, you were on a trip recently and you missed the last episode. Why don't you share with our audience why you were in Austin, Texas for a few days? Yeah, I, uh, I went for a little mini trip with some college buddies of mine. I also had a short film that was in the austin comedy film festival which was a cool experience we got to watch congratulations uh, and i don't mean that sarcastically i mean really congratulations it's awesome that you got your short film into the austin film festival tell us a little bit about your short film and where people can find it Uh, you can find it on the tube if you look up uh leanne and my name nick shanman it's basically a short film where I get a bunch of guns put to my head because I'm a piece of shit. And that's all I will give the audience. There you go. So Nick was, was in Austin receiving that award for his short film, Leanne. I hosted the podcast with Kina baby, AKA KB. He was on. Sorry, the by the way, I apologize that you had to do that. Yeah. So a uh, quick update on our diehard Nets friend, Kina baby. He did not get tickets to any of the Brooklyn Nets games. However, he will be attending the Knicks playoff game on Wednesday night. So it just goes to show you how loyal of a Nets fan that he is. Yeah, that actually disgusts me. Uh, it says here in the docket that I have to ask you about your trip. So, oh. hey, Spen, I uh, heard you went to Las Vegas. Oh. Why don't you tell me what that was like? Well, this is totally unexpected, and thank you for asking. Um, of course. If you follow me on Fireside Nets, you know I was in Vegas for a few days. I've been posting videos every single day, either after a few gambling sessions, uh, holding a drink, but most importantly, watching the Brooklyn Nets and and cheering them on on Saturday. So while Vegas, also holding a drink, while also holding a drink, Vegas was great. Uh, had a lot of laughs with some old friends. I want to shout out Bozzy B for allowing me to stay at the Virgin Hotel. Keith, one of my oldest friends from. River Edge, our hometown, him and his uncle, Rich Bosworth, they are, um, how do I put this? They're owners of the equity group that run the Virgin Hotel. So they essentially run the Virgin Hotel. It was awesome staying with them. Uh, Best food. Keith was a Keith, solid basketball player back in the day. Very nice mid-range game. Can hit that elbow jumper uh, with as much consistency as a a young Tim Duncan. DeMar DeRozan. Oh, yeah. It works either way. But great time in Vegas, got to watch the Nets on Saturday, and it was actually really funny. So I was at what will be the sports book, and there's a huge area with a bunch of TVs where I was sitting watching the Nets game, but there happened to be a Vegas Knights game going uh, going on at the same time, Las Vegas' hockey team. So you had a ton of Knights fans watching that game while I was watching the Nets game. And unfortunately, like me rooting for the Nets got me in hot water a few times with the Knights fans. So there was a play where the opponent, I think it's the Hurricanes, the Hurricanes scored and they nullified the goal. And at that point, the Nets had like turned it over or made some some mistake. And I was like, oh, what the hell was that? And and a bunch of fans looked at me and they're like, it wasn't a goal. It doesn't count. <laughs> I was like, guys, I'm different like, screen, different screen. Game. Easy here. But uh, no, Vegas was a blast. The food, the booze. I lost a little bit of money uh, gambling, but I did win some back on our Brooklyn Nets. And that leads me, Nick, to our first topic, which is the Nets beating the Celtics 104 to 93 in game one of the first round of the NBA playoffs. Really the only topic, the main topic of discussion. The main topic, if you will. Uh, two different halves, the first and the second. As that's usually, that's usually, usually how the game goes. It's usually usually how the two. game goes. But for the Nets, it, it seemed like two different games, actually, because they were pretty bad in that first half. Uh, They came out extremely flat. They couldn't get anything going from three. Kevin Durant, who is one of the best scorers in the league, looked like Marty Collins for a few possessions. If you guys don't remember Marty Collins, he was one of the worst players on some bad New York Knicks teams. 
And uh, I don't know why he comes to mind, but for some reason growing up, everyone would always tell me he was the worst player in New York. So random. Marty Collins, Very random. sorry about that. Didn't want to uh, ruin anyone's day, especially yours, Marty's. But KD was off in, in the first half. The only one who seemed to kind of score a little bit was Kyrie. Harden's game wasn't there. And unfortunately, the role players weren't doing shit in the first half. Blake Griffin, I think, ended up with one point for the game. He was dominated by, by whoever was, was in the front court against him. And um, the Celtics came out hot. I mean, Tatum, smart, hit a bunch of threes early on. I think his name's, I want to say James Naismith, but it's Aaron Naismith. Aaron Naismith came into the game. He hit a few threes. James Naismith actually invented basketball. Yes. Aaron Naismith is now playing basketball on the Celtics. Totally different guy. Um, and, and the Nets started the game something horrible from three. I think it was like 0 of 10 or 0 of 11. And 0 of 10, yes. Joe Harris hit, hit a three. So it was, it was a rough first quarter, Nick. What, what did you think of that first quarter? Well, let me give you a fun fact. According to SwishAnalytics.com, the Nets averaged the season 30.3 points a game in the first quarter, their highest scoring quarter. 30, and you got like a 29.4, 29.5, 27, whatever. Their highest scoring quarter is always the first quarter. And it's not that they were, were a couple points below. They scored 16 points in That's the bad. first quarter. That's bad, Nick. That is terrible. Um, and, you know, we need, to, especially going further into the playoffs, Listen, was I worried after that first quarter? No. Were Celtics fans confident after their first quarter? No. I was watching the game at an open bar uh, in Manhattan with my roommate, Seaver, who's a Celtics fan. And I said to him, down what? I think 14, 15 at one point was, was the peak of, of the Celtics lead in that first quarter. I said, are you at all feeling good about this game? And he said, absolutely not. So I'm not going to sit here and say that first quarter was a huge concern. What I will say is going forward, when we play teams that aren't missing one of their best players, like Jalen Brown, when we're playing teams who don't have their star player go have one of his worst games the last few weeks, Jason Tatum, we are going to need to clean up that first quarter play. And speaking of cleaning up, Spen, you ever get hairy all over, maybe unkept, unshaven, a little itchy? You know, I don't want to admit this to our listeners, but because it's a safe space, you're my brother, and we, we've done, this is our 63rd episode I will admit that I occasionally let some parts of my body get a little bit hairier than they should. Hey, I think we all do, right? Life's busy. We're working hard. We're trying to make time for our girlfriends, our friends, and we forget to clean up, right? We forget to take care of, just to say, for lack of a better term, our private parts. So we want to make a shout out to manscaped.com for your cleanup needs. Everything you need to do to keep everything looking good, looking sleek, smooth, stylish. That one's for the ladies. Go to manscaped.com. They basically sell trimmers, razors, uh, cleaners for the parts of your body that you don't want to talk about out loud. And to get 20% off your first order at manscaped.com, use code FIRESIDE, F-A-R-E-S-I-D-E, all capital letters, as in Fireside Nets, for 20, that's 20% off. That is a fifth of the price off. Clean up, guys. And the Nets will clean up their first quarter play. We know that you guys don't want to talk about your private parts, but we will. And that's what we do with Manscaped. Fireside, all caps for 20% off. Nick, you couldn't have said it better. Hey, thanks. I want a brother who I could talk about my privates with. So Yeah, all right, moving on. Um, so Sorry, was, Nick, that, was the ad read over? I just wanted it to was continue. over. The, net, the ad read's over. <laughs> like we said, the Nets come out really slow in that first half. Um, what I've heard from players and, and I heard Jeff green say this, and it's ironic because, you know, I, I hear all these fans of other teams saying, Oh, the nets didn't sell out. Where were all your fans? Jeff green after the game said they were definitely affected and like, weren't used to the fans being in the stadium. And I think in a weird way, it kind of shook a lot of the players. Like they didn't, they, they couldn't comprehend that 14,300 Nets fans were standing on their feet. Not everyone's a Nets fan, but you, you get the drift and just making noise. And I think, you know, you know, guys tensed up a little bit. They weren't used to that environment. So whatever they want to blame, you know, the first half woes on the big three, not playing together a lot, the crowd noise, whatever the case may be, they just came out flat. The second half was a completely different ball game, Nick. I mean, absolutely hundred percent that. And that all is because of our three superstars. Yes. The second half was a different game, but I think me and you both still have our concerns with how this team played. I mean, looking over the entire course of the game, you have Durant, Kyrie, and Harden, 
32 points, 29 points, 21 points. And Harris with 10. Dude, after that, we got no help from our bench. We had Jeff Green with three points in 27 minutes. We had Blake Griffin with one point in 20 minutes. Bruce Brown, two in 18. Shamit, zero. Claxton, probably the best off the bench with six and five in 11 minutes, which still isn't promising whatsoever. So to me, the, the, here's what I took from this game. We have the talent to carry ourselves out of shitty situations. We have players who can put the team on their back, Durant, Harden, Irving, obviously, who will hit shots when we need them to hit shots. With that said, dude, we were playing a lowly injured Celtics team. Like I said, missing Jalen Brown, one of their best players. Jason Tatum, six for 20 from the field, couldn't buy a bucket. Kemba Walker is just a volume shooter at this point who really doesn't shoot an efficient uh, rating for, from anywhere in the field. And their, you know, their big man is now Time Lord, who shout out to him, 11 and 9, almost had a double-double, looked solid. He, he had nine blocks, too. Don't forget, that was, that was the That's story of the crazy. game for the Celtics. Robert Williams, a.k.a. Time Lord, was the reason they were in this game in the fourth quarter. I mean, he was, and in that third quarter, he was just, every time the Nets tried to go to the rim, whether it was Harden, whether it was Claxton, he had an answer for everybody. So shout out to Robert Williams. In my opinion, he was the player of the game for Boston. Absolutely. And then just to conclude, my point is we won by 11. Yes. Okay. We won by 11 with our three superstars having to take over the game with our bench quiet as hell with the Celtics. I'll say at, you know, 68% uh, 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 talent capacity, you know, compared to their entire season. So that's what concerns me. Um, did our superstars put the team on their back? Absolutely. Did they take care of what we need to be taken care of? Yes. That play isn't going to suffice as we get into later rounds. Heck, I don't even think that would get past us in a couple more games with the Celtics once Tatum gets hot. So we came away with the win, but my concern is we need to play better team basketball. Our role players need to step up, at least one of them in the one goddamn game, and we can't expect the team we're playing to play worse than us. So there is a huge flip side to your point. And while you're concerned about areas in which the Nets need to improve, starting the game off better, role players playing better. Nick, we won this game by 11 points, and our big three played one really amazing half of basketball, and we won by 11, and that's all they needed to do. My point is this. Brooklyn is a lot better defensively than people give them credit for. You saw that against the Celtics. After the Celtics got hot in that first quarter, second quarter, the Nets shut him down the rest of the game. Tatum didn't have a bad first half. He had an abysmal second half and he was six of 20 from the field. But I think in the first five or six minutes, he hit a few shots. We defended Kemba well. I mean, people like to crap all over Kyrie and James Harden's defense, but they played their men pretty well. So that's one thing. The second thing is, I think we had two and a half out of the big three. Harden right now just doesn't look all the way there yet. He seems about 70 to 80% to me, maybe closer to 80. But my point is this, there are a lot of plays where he, he almost tested his, his footwork. Like if he can drive by the guy and he ended up settling for step back threes. I think the more Harden plays, he had 21, nine and eight, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, the more Harden plays, he will get that comfort back. And if he's able to master that, drive whether it's the floater or the kick out because he wasn't doing a lot of that in that game you started to see him drive a little bit more in the second half but but he just didn't have it if he's able to do a lot more of what James Harden does that makes him elite I think the Nets will be so much better off and I mean let's not overlook the fact that Kevin Durant had a really bad first quarter he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat but he picked it up in that second half and he ended up with 32 points and that's after one terrible half of basketball Kyrie Irving 29 points on 11 of 20 from the field two of eight from three-point range Kyrie does miss a lot of threes but he had every timely bucket for the Nets and so, so I wanted to commend KD and Kyrie for the job they did I think Harden's going to get better you're going to see more from the role players this was the first game for a lot of these guys in a meaningful playoff game where they're a championship favorite I know Blake Griffin's been there before but he's never been on a team like this he underperformed Guys like Bruce Brown, Landry Shamit, Nick Claxton, they underperformed. Joe Harris got it going a little bit, 10 points on the day. I think two three-pointers for him. But these guys are going to show we need up. Jeff Green. That, yes, Jeff Green. I agree. Yes. I agree. These, these young players, is the, this is the biggest game of a lot of their careers. Yes. Jeff Green is a veteran. He has been in multiple playoffs. He has been a, a contender in, in multiple years in the playoffs. 
and he needs in 27 minutes to put up more than three points. Jeff Green is the is the Andre Iguodala of the Warriors, right? The current Trevor Ariza of the Heat. He's that veteran who is going to get open looks because he's going to camp out from three while the while the uh, the younger, more athletic superstars create open lanes to the basket, draw doubles, draw triples. Jeff Green's going to have to start hitting those open shots. So yes, am I? I don't want to. I want to over exaggerate. Is am I super concerned? No. But if you're going to say of all the role players, as they slowly start to shake that rust off, as they slowly start to get that confidence up, I agree. Jeff Green is the first one I'm looking at to have that veteran presence and leadership to start playing to his his potential. Green only hit one three, but the shot was extremely significant. It was late in the fourth yes. quarter. The Celtics were creeping back, and then Green pretty much hit the three to essentially close out the game. After that, I, I think it was a double-digit lead. The Celtics hit a few shots, but the Nets covered the seven, seven and a half points of which I, I bet on. So shout out to the Nets for covering. Um, but I am not that worried moving forward. I, I don't think Time Lord's – Time Lord, not Time Lord. Time Lord. Geez, time Lord. I don't think Time Lord's going to have nine blocks a game. I think Tatum will have a few games where he goes all Jason Tatum and has 40 or 50 points. Do I think he's going to do that every single game for the rest of the series? No. I, th- I think he's going to have a few bad performances, a few good performances. Um, Kemba. Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart is not going to hit as many threes. Right, right. Kemba will pick it up a little bit. I, I can't see Kemba playing this bad the whole series. But You know what's funny about Kemba? Yeah. And I was talking, talking to my roommates about this. I love Kemba. Cardiac mm-hmm. Kemba, his play at UConn, crossing up that dude at, at, at Pittsburgh, is one of the coolest basketball plays I have ever seen. It was unbelievable. You should watch it on YouTube if you have not watched it. You while. young kids, go watch that old highlight <laughs> footage of Kemba Walker. Kemba is a fun, flashy player to watch. He's athletic. He's quick. His cutback, his stepbacks are beautiful. They're smooth. They're rhythmic. He's really uh, an entertaining player. If you look at his career shooting percentage, dude, it's not great. He has been a volume shooter on bad teams up until this point, right? He was the guy in the Hornets who was shooting 40 to 42% every season, averaging 25 points a game, but not getting anywhere. So a little bit of a misconception I think people have uh, from Kemba is that he's gonna is a knockdown shooter. He is a solid scorer. I actually prefer him driving over, over taking threes and jumpers. He is a flashy player. He is a smart player. Now that he's on the Celtics, he makes good passes. He has some veteran leadership. He's not the guy to me that I want the Celtics, that if I was a Celtics fan, going to in clutch time. I want Tatum. Obviously, I would go Jalen, but he's not in right now. After Tatum, dude, Fournier, I would even prefer to take – I think he's a higher percentage shooter than Kemba Walker is. Okay. And even someone like you know, Marcus Smart, who I was one of my least favorite players in the NBA, just he's one of those guys that if he's not in your team, you hate him, right? Like a Tyson Chandler, he's just a hardworking hustler who gets in everybody's head. I would almost rather go to him. I don't think Kemba – and I might be wrong here. He may, he may step up in the rest of the games. I don't think Kemba is going to be a deciding factor in these games. I don't think he's going to be the guy that they go to towards the end. Five of 16 from the field for Kemba Walker. He had 15 points. He, he was three of seven from three-point range. Uh, Jason Tatum was six of 20 from the field, as I mentioned earlier. One of four from three-point range for 22 points. You're going to need to get more out of those two guys if, if you want to compete in this series. Um, I was surprised Jabari Parker gave the Celtics some good minutes, nine points in 22 minutes. He hit a three, uh, Peyton Pritchard did not play a lot. Aaron Naismith played a little bit, five points for him. I'm surprised about this. Pritchard has had had a great regular season. Yeah, no, I was surprised Pritchard didn't play more. Um, and then Grant Williams, one minute for him. He did not get a lot of time either. Um, Tristan Thompson. Four points, 10 rebounds. I mean, Time Lord just outplayed him. I think you're going to see Stevens start to lean more towards Rob Williams if you're going to get a mediocre performance from Thompson every game. Uh, Thompson did have one nice putback dunk on on a missed smart He did. I'll say this. Another reason why I'm not concerned moving forward, Nick, the Nets shot the ball terribly from three-point range. Eight of 34, 23.5%. Jeff Green, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Joe Harris, and Kevin Durant, the only five players to hit a three in this game. Shamit was 0 of 1, and, and nobody else, Blake Griffin, Bruce Brown, and Nick Claxton didn't even attempt a three. But 8 of 34 is terrible, and you still won this game by 11 points. Let me ask you this. you know, To play devil's advocate against my own team here, you say the Nets' defense is underrated and people don't realize they could step it up. Yes. Are we just seeing playoff defense? Is that yeah. what we're seeing here? Yeah. 
hundred percent. You're seeing intensity slightly pick up because they know it's the playoffs. They have a little bit more pride in their games in the playoffs than they do the regular season. And that's exactly why the intensity is picking up a little bit. You see it from both sides. That wasn't a pretty, Oh, this is beautiful basketball type game. That was an ugly. Okay. Who's going to be hotter for a longer type game. And if you have Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harden, I would bet money that that trio is going to be hotter than Tatum, Kemba Water, Kemba Water, Kemba Walker, and Marcus Smart slash Evan Fournier. I agree. I mean, I wouldn't even say it was who's hotter in this game. I would say it was who's colder. I remember looking up and during the second quarter with seven and a half minutes left, it was 34, 28. And I was one of the lowest scoring starts to a Nets game I've seen all season. So I agree. Uh, our players are, are going to be streaker in, in, are not okay. Our players are always going to win the street battle of scoring, right? Our players are always going to win uh, who can get hotter quicker, who could score faster, more efficiently, who could pick up the pace. Yeah, you're going to go Durant, Harden, and Irving every time. Um, but this game to me was slow, somewhat ugly. It was both teams shaking the rust off. Uh, and I do agree playoff time, defense steps up on all fronts. Durant had 12 rebounds, which you're not seeing from Durant this season. Average, he's not, he, if I could find his average quickly, um, on the season, he's averaging seven rebounds a game. So Durant pounding the paint more, being more of a factor down low, wanting to get the ball on his hands. You don't see that during the regular season as much. So yes, playoff basketball, intensity on all sides, but obviously for the best, and you see it from every team. Two quick plays I want to recap. Kyrie Irvin had one of those cool highlights where he had Evan Fournier on his knees and he just walked around him for the layup. That was Fournier, a really- we were all- terrible defender he was trying to reach in and steal the ball from Kyrie then he would just fall down that happened two or three times yep I I know I mentioned it earlier but Kyrie Irving on offense when he has it going when he has that little pull-up bank shot on either side of the court going uh, he he is unstoppable at at times he I mean he can get cold he he hasn't shot the ball great from three lately but if it's it within the three-point line I always know he's going to hit the most ridiculous shots. And then finally, this is the last thing we'll talk about. We'll move on that Marcus smart charge on Kevin Durant in the second quarter. Durant went down hard. How nervous were you when he hit the ground like that? Uh, Maybe a, maybe a second or two uh, of concern (sighs) to me. You know, in this day and age, I wouldn't consider Durant a flopper whatsoever. But my first thought when anybody goes down hard is, is he trying to just draw the foul? Is he trying to draw a flagrant? Is he just taking rest, right? You saw LeBron get boxed out by Chris Paul um, and was on the floor for like 20 minutes and he fell awkwardly. So I I was slightly concerned. It's always scary, Um, but I was pretty drunk and wasn't too worried about it. Yeah, I mean, the announcers made it a lot bigger than it needed to be they kept showing me the replay and I think I was like slightly more scared when I kept watching the replay than I watched it in real time like yeah he hit the floor pretty hard it was a great play by Marcus Smart but I'm almost used to KD hitting the floor and getting up knowing that he's not going to be fucked up for the next you know however long like this this guy we forget you know anyone want to call it wants to call him soft this guy's a professional athlete who's come back from a terrible Achilles injury to get 30 points in his sleep. So that's the final thing we'll say about that. Let's move on to game number two. I'm sorry, Nick, did you have something? I didn't know Michael Strahan was a Nets fan. Oh, fun fact. Who else? Michael Strahan was at the game courtside. There were a few other people too. Shout out to Michael Strahan having the greatest April fool's day prank of all time, where he took a picture that was Photoshopped of his teeth and the gap tooth being closed. That was hilarious. So shout out to Strahan. I didn't notice anybody else. uh, I wasn't paying close attention to who was in the stands. Uh, Strahan, they kept showing his face uh, after the game. Yeah. I think there were a few other celebrities. I can't put my finger on it. Uh, Maybe towards the end of the podcast, I'll look it up and see. Oh, Jeffrey Wright was there. He posted on Twitter. Shout out to Jeffrey Wright. Great actor, diehard Brooklyn Nets fan. I have asked him to come on the podcast a few times over DM. He has not gotten back to me, but that will not stop me from attempting to get him on this show because he would be the perfect guest on here. If you're listening. Jeffrey Wright. All right, Nick, let's get to game number two. That will be played later today. And what would you know it? You and I are going to the game. We are going to the game. We got vaccinated seats with the hardened promo code. We are going up. Well, well, one of us, 
was able to get the hard hard and all right i got the hard promo code spend got the later seats not as as great of a deal as mine but we are the dude this is my first uh nets game in the barclay center no i'm super pumped for you uh was slightly mad at you for a little bit because i thought you got tickets without me and that prompted uh, an angry call from me you were like dude chill my roomie got the tickets he's not your brother so he's not thinking of you like i'm thinking of you the second you got tickets you let me know and i purchased two of my own tickets um so before we get into the analysis and everything if you'd like to meet the hosts of fireside nets spen and nick please message us shoot us a comment on on twitter and uh, we, we can try to meet up at, at halftime. Maybe we'll go to a designated location and, and say what up to our listeners and fellow Nets fans. Yeah, if you want to buy us a beer, they're pretty we expensive, no. so grab one for us. And if 10 of you want to buy us multiple beers, we, we'll have no problem with that. I could use like some nachos, maybe a burger too. Thank you. Even if you're a Celtics fan, still come by. We're friends with people from Boston. We'll talk to you about... My, I will have my roommate there who is a Celtics fan. Oh, there you go. So you, you, the Celtics fans can talk to your roommate. All right, Nick, let's get into some some stuff for game two. So I, I think we touched on it, but the Nets need to start better. You talked about their averages this season. The first quarter, they're, they're usually great. I, I, I think they got to come out stronger than they did uh, in game one. But, I mean, sometimes in, in history – the team that loses comes out stronger. So I'd like to see the Nets come out better to start. Um, And they got to gear up for a Tatum big game because he's probably not going to go six of 20 from the field again. I I just, I just can't see him doing it. He's too good. Durant has been playing good defense on him and, and some other guys, Bruce Brown as well. Uh, Jeff Green had a few possessions where, where he played pretty tight D on him, but you can't, you can't keep a legend in the shadows for long, Nick. No, shout out Batman. Um, my biggest, uh, my biggest things that we need to work on for this game is I'll just stick to three is one. You mentioned it. Uh, we have to get into the groove of things earlier. We have a tendency to start the game lackadaisical and just kind of fire threes and play a little bit like a show buddy basketball come out almost a little too cocky. So I, my first takeaway is jump right into your offense and get the ball moving. What I'd love to see, even as the first play is a down screen, Joe Harris comes along the baseline, pops out to the corner for three. Start the game with a Joe Harris three. Get your teammates involved. Get your role players involved. Number two is I need to see all around more ball movement and less less iso ball, right? We had to go to the iso ball because we had to come back and win this game. And that's a great thing to fall back on. We have the players. You can put Kyrie on the right side, clear out. You can put KD on the right side, clear out pretty much either side you can put Harden anywhere and just give them a little bit of space these guys will create these guys will score we can't depend on iso basketball so my second takeaway is comes with the first one early on get everyone else involved and move the basketball okay don't depend on being down 10 again handing the ball off to Kyrie and saying go to work please we need to come back in this game so hotter start uh better ball movement and three I need to see at least one role player step up in playoff time. I want to see either Shamit with 18 points of, you know, four or five threes. I want to see Bruce Brown running his ass off in transition, getting a few dunks. As soon as we get a rebound, go Blake Griffin has that quarterback view, right? That vision. He can hit him on the run. So that for me is going to be the key takeaways to this game. Now, do I think that if those things don't happen, well, we might lose. I'm not too concerned about it right now. The Celtics are weak. We, we, what were we, eight point seven and a half point favorites in the last one? Now we're yes. nine and a half, I believe, in this one. That's what yes. the line started at. We are heavy favorites in this game. We should be winning these game, these games pretty easily. With that said, those things we need to stick to, and not even for to win the game today, but to just be better off in the playoffs. Listen, this is what what was that the the eighth game that our three superstars played together? Yes, first uh, it's, it's, it's a small number like that. I'm not sure. I think it was the ninth, right? I think we were I think we were six and two, and that was the ninth game that Harden, Irving, and Durant played together. This is going to be the tenth. That is not a lot of games. So to me, while the Celtics are a weaker, hurt team, work on the little things. Work on the movement. Work on the transition. Work on your switches on defense, and and do what you need to do to get by, so you can be better come the next round, come the next game. I'll tell you this. I think uh, a guy you brought up, Bruce Brown, I think he can have a major impact on the game because what he does great when he's playing his best, he has that Draymond Green esque game where he finds open spaces on the court. He gets the ball because KD or Kyrie is doubled and he makes a play toward the basket, whether it's a little float shot or an alley oop to Nick Claxton, a pass to Jeff Green, a, a kick out to Shamit for three, what have you. 
I think that the way Brad Stevens and the Celtics are going to start to defend Durant, Kyrie, and, and Harden, they're going to send that double team. And Bruce Brown is going to be wide open in the middle of the court. So I would like to see the Nets go to that a lot more in game two. The few times they did it in game one, it worked. And Bruce Brown's a tenacious defender. He gives you a guy on the other end who can annoy Marcus Smart, who can annoy Kemba Walker. He played a few defensive possessions on Tatum in that first game. Um, in a weird way, I, I think Brown can be more – important to you in this series than Harris or Shamit. I know it's a bold statement. I, I know you're going to need a few threes from Harris per game, but I just think the way the Celtics are, the Celtics aren't a great shooting team. So what they fall back on is defensive effort, being the tougher team, you know, Marcus Smart, that, that's his game, right? He wants to intimidate you physically. I think you, you, you play Bruce Brown more minutes and a guy like Nick Claxton, give him a few more minutes. I, I don't, I don't think this is a great matchup for Blake Griffin. I just don't. The Celtics put out these big bodies like Time Lord and Tristan Thompson to bang with guys. I at least want a guy in Claxton who's either as tall as them or Jeff Green who can space them out. But I don't think Blake Griffin provides enough down low where he's going to body with Tristan Thompson and, and, and bang with Time Lord. No, I just don't think – Steph isn't yeah. as quick as it used to be. So so play Nick Claxton more minutes because because you know that guy's energized. You know he's going to give effort, and that's something that the Nets will need against the Celtics in game two. Um, and I also think, and, and I guess this is my third takeaway. I'm not going to rehash the first two because uh, I don't remember them. But the third takeaway is James Harden has to have a, a just a more impactful game. He had 21, nine and eight. It was a pretty quiet 21, nine and eight. Like he was good, but he was the clear third guy in the Kyrie KD Harden trio. So I, I'd like to see him play better. Um, this is a bonus, but don't let Robert Williams get nine blocks. Please don't. He's, he's a good Good player, good young guy. He's not a nine block player. He's not Bill Russell. Please, for the love of God, don't let that man dominate you in the paint in the paint on defense. No, I'm with you. Uh, my prediction for the game is 118, 101 nets. Bruce Brown is going to have 21 and eight. I actually think I had a really on point prediction for game one. I think it was like. My prediction was the Nets would win by like 11. I think like 109 to, to 98 or something. And they won, um, was it 104? 104, 93. So I was very close on that score. Um, Not I can, really. Yeah. I can see this being a 10-point game, a 103 to 93. Maybe there's a little bit more scoring in this one. The guys pick it up. So let's say it's 115 to 105. Let's call it that. Um I just think you're going to see more of an effort from all the role players we talked about in the playoffs. If the role players are going to play well, it's usually at home. And the fact that they didn't play well in game one, I think they're all going to turn it around in game two guys like Jeff green, Shamit, uh, Blake Griffin, who weren't kind of ready for that playoff environment. Cause think about it like this KD Kyrie are able to play their way into the game, right? They were not good to start off. And, and the more minutes they got, the more comfortable, Jeff Green, Shamit, Bruce Brown, these guys play limited minutes. Shamit doesn't get 25, 30 minutes a game. Bruce Brown isn't playing over 20 minutes. So they have to be very conscious of the opportunities they get on the court, and they need to execute. And I think you'll see a lot more execution from the role players in this one. Final score, 115-105. Brooklyn will win this game by 10. I... I'm looking forward to going to the game with you, my brother. I'm looking forward to watching the Nets continue to succeed. And I just want to give, I know we didn't want to touch upon our friends on the other side of the pond, but I, I just want to say, name. I just want to say scoreboard. Scoreboard is correct. There are people that go to Nets games for your information. Me and Nick are two of them. And we'll be joined by as many Nets fans as there are in the stadium that night. So take that one. Yep. That's that true. Fact. And you can't argue logic. All right, Sven. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll, I'll have some burgers on the grill. Well, the game's today, so you'll see me later today. Yep. That's what I meant. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Fireside Nets with Sven and Nick, brought to you by Empire Sports Media. Any and final, Manscaped.com. Any final words for the listeners before tonight's game? Brooklyn, we go hard. Go Nets, and as always, catch, catch you on the fire, on the fire side. side.